You know, sometimes, Rob, a baby Zoomer, if you're a little Zoomer, you're a baby Zoomer. Gina. <laughs> Rob, cheers. cheers. And Bree, cheers. 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 Happy Wino Wednesday. And everybody. Everyone here, cheers, everyone everybody. there. This is an exciting shoot. Hold on. <laughs> Monumental day. <laughs> Uh, we okay, think it's, go. yeah. Okay, if we had technical difficulties again, Rob, I was <laughs> going to walk out and just let you handle it. <laughs> at this point, at this point. I just dumped this on my head. Welcome again, everybody. This is such a monumental occasion because what you can't maybe see out there is that we have live people with us here for the first time all year. And it's very cool, right? Amazing. I mean, I'm so excited I could scream. <laughs> Are we allowed to hug everybody or no? I, I, I don't want to get in trouble. But <laughs> I'll be very careful. Very, very careful. But welcome, everyone, to 25th Wino Wednesday. 25th? 25th. This is so crazy. Wow. Where tonight we are featuring orange wine, which if you've cracked it open or looked at the bottle, I'm sure you are well aware that this is a very strange but interesting wine we will talk about. And we're also um, pairing it tonight with a pairing party with Brie here, and she is with Rajiski, who she does painting parties, and she'll tell you a little bit more about all the things she can offer. But we thought, how fun would it be to paint uh, some wine and cheese while eating wine and cheese tonight? Let's right? do it. Let's do it. Let's do it without further ado. Let's get into so, it. So, as usual, uh, YouTubers, if you've got questions, you can chat with us via the chat feature, which is now not working, which I will fix while Rob talks. And um, we'll go from there. We'll go from there. So, I will start by telling you what's on your plate. Gina will fix that. She's a master multitasker, as you can see. Um, and then we'll throw it back to Brie, who will set you up on the painting. So we're going to taste and order today, and like I said, we'll come back and give you way more detail, but just to set up what's what on the plate. The first cheese we're going to taste is the Good Mood, and it has herbs on the outside, kind of an off-white, almost yellowish color. That's the Good Mood. That'll be the first cheese. The second cheese is the Robiola, and that's a little bit more kind of pasty, softer. It has a natural rind with a kind of interesting growth on it, which is all supposed to be their growth. <laughs> it's all natural and it's delicious, but I'm just giving you a little heads up and, and telling you what's what. So that's the Robiola. The third cheese is Garocha, and Garocha is a firm, kind of whiter pasted cheese uh, with a dark rind on it, and uh, I'm excited for that one. The fourth cheese is Manchego. Some of you may know Manchego. This is a six month and it has a, again a, like a darker rind. It's got little tiny holes in it, but this will be the, the fourth cheese. Um, also, it's a little bit darker than the Garocha. So that's a, a good way to tell them apart. There are all the fun accoutrements. We've got crackers, uh, green grapes, um, some herbs, dried fruit, and of course, chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> How's the chat doing? The chat's good. We're back. Right. We are back, baby. Give, give us a chat and just so we know it's working. Give us a chat. We've got George out there, so I know we know there's a, there's a couple wine owls out there that are, are working with us. So we're good. Well, so I we're good. welcome everybody. Yes. Um, indeed. So, I guess, um, let me tell a few things, because you've cracked open the wine, orange wine, Spanish, and I haven't taken a sip yet. But people said, I should have said this first, to maybe sit down before you take a taste because it's very different, mm -hmm. what you might not expect. So I'm going to see what I think. And uh, mm -hmm. my first sip ever. Oh, it's very like apple juicy to me. Is it sweet? Mm -hmm. No, not sweet at all. And Brie, you hit it, I think, too. It's kind of white wine-esque, mm -hmm. um, which we'll talk a little bit later about why that is. Um, but we wanted to get started because it's going to take a little while for the painters to paint while we eat and chat. So I'm going to turn it over to Bree. She'll tell a little bit about herself and then kind of get started with how this all works. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Bree. Um, my company is called Bree G Ski. I do paint parties. I also do graphic design and marketing. And uh, I have a lifestyle blog that's based in San Diego where I chat about fun events like this and cheese and wine as well as uh, travel and fun things to do in the area. So today we're gonna just get started with this wine and cheese paint, painting. Um, and so what we're gonna do first is just get out a little bit of white with a, just a dab of blue. Um, and what we're gonna start with is the outline of everything. And we'll just go from there. So just a little white mixed with a dab of blue. 
Can you make Brie all colors with the colors you've given yes. people pretty much? Okay. Nice pretty stuff. much. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> 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 okay. With the primaries this time. Okay, so just white with a little dab of blue because we're just going to outline and then we'll fill in the background first. So we're kind of using this as our pencil basically to just get an outline started. And we're going to start at the top left and we're going to just kind of outline the shape of the wine bottle. Starting here, just kind of fold down, and we're going to come around the bottle, and just pull all the way, halfway down the page. Okay, zoomers, if you can see that, yeah, making the shape of a wine bottle on the left side of the canvas. I think we all know what wine bottles are. <laughs> <laughs> that one's not tough. Um, <laughs> And one thing to note is to make sure you go on the edge of your canvas, top, bottom, side, so that uh, the whole painting will be complete at the end. So we should have a wine bottle now. And we're just going to go up at an angle to get a bit of that cheese started. So again, the color is a little bit of white mixed with blue. So color. Um, and which brush? Was it the fatter brush was a question? Uh, yes, the Either brush will work, but the fatter brush I would go with first. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna kind of just come up to the top, top middle. We're gonna make a, a little bit of an oval, half oval shape. So is this going to be the top of the glass? Yes. We just want to get the shapes there, and then we'll fill it all in towards the end. What if you mess up? Like, <laughs> what happens? Oh. The best part about paint is you just go right on top of it. Uh huh. So it's we forgiving. Cut that. It's, it's like, forgiving. It's kind of like cheese. It's very forgiving. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So then uh, we're gonna just kind of come down the side, and then you want to round out the bottom and do the same on the opposite side. And if it doesn't look right, don't worry. We're just kind of trying to get the basic overall shape. And when we add more color, it'll all just kind of start to come together. So just try the places. Is it kind of like sketching a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, we're just okay. going to sketch it out, and then uh, we're going to get there by the end. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Were you a Bob Ross fan? Did you ever watch him paint, too? Like, I wondered if every... Yeah. I did, yes. Yeah, uh-huh, a little bit. Uh -huh, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Cheese is this? 
Don't talk here to some <laughs> artist. <laughs> she knows the name of the show. Yeah. Just wondering what our uh, what our model is. I'm going. What did you call it? The dirty rinded one. The, I'm going with garrocha. Growth. I said there was a growth, growth on the rind. on the garrocha. Is that bad yeah. growth? Yeah. <laughs> While you guys are finishing your outline, let me tell you a little bit about the wine. What do you think? Ooh. So, orange wine, you guys, does not come from oranges. <laughs> Somebody asked that, and it, no. It does come from grapes, and you were right, Bree. It comes from white wine grapes that are simply left to um, soak in their skins like red wine. So it's white wine made in the style of red wine. So it's that production method. Normally, white wine, they take the, the stems and the skins away keeps the wine white. Because you know, white wine can be made of Pinot Noir grapes, which are dark in color. It's just that they just take the juice. Anyway, they leave the, uh, the stems, the seeds, and the skins in with the, um, the juice and from, let it ferment. And so that's why I'm getting kind of like, not a rotten apple <laughs> taste, but um, you know, like an older apple that's been sitting out a few yes. days on the counter, yes. right? And it just kind of loses its juice, but it just has that hint of fermentation. Um, a lot of people think orange wines are more natural because there's no interference with yeasts being added or anything to the wine because they just sit around and ferment in their skins and stems and seeds. So that's kind of interesting that they get that orange color though. Yeah, so you're, but you're getting like a fermented like, kind of like you do. a yeasty flavor. Yeah, and I was thinking when I read a little bit about it before I tasted it, I was like, oh, what if it's like kombucha or something yeah. really strong and fermenty and it's not that fermenty, mm -hmm. but it definitely has a different vibe to it. And at first I thought I got a hint of like effervescence, but now I don't. Now it's just it's wine like but I did at first, but that might just have been in my head. Um, but this one happens to come from Portugal. Um, but Rob, I don't know if you know, you probably know, where wine they think originated way back, where the first wines came from. Georgia, the country of Georgia. Yes. Professor. <laughs> I swear I, I didn't have any information prior. I'm sure. <laughs> so yes, Rob is right. Do you know about when, Professor, that might have been? Oh, I'll say 4,000 BC. BC, very, very close. Can you imagine this? Because uh, yeah, back when they were making, first making wines, this kind of was probably one of the first wines yeah. they made because they would put it in vessels, be it um, cement, you know, some sort of a something, something to keep it in, contain it in. Um, they would typically coat the inside with beeswax so it wouldn't seep into whatever they were, the vessel was, mm -hmm. and then bury it underground to just keep it at a, a room temperature, um, even temperature to do its thing, to turn grapes into wine. Um, but, and this goes dates way back, Still made predominantly in Georgia, which is not um, Georgia, USA. It's not Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, but more <laughs> Georgia, yeah, in Europe and uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, Georgia, Slovenia is very big on the orange wines, and Austria and um, Northern Italy. So kind of that region, super big. Um, but here's a little trivia one. Do you know which state in the U.S. grows the grapes that make the best orange wine? 
Um, I will guess. No, everyone here might think. <laughs> It's not what we've Not seen. California, not Washington. You would think. New York. New, New York, York State. Really. So New York State has the biggest USA production of orange wines because they grow kind of the grapes that lend themselves to this process. So anyways, this one's uh, Portuguese, and it's grapes that I don't even know. Um, I, I don't even know these grapes. So this will be another one of a wine on Wednesday. A, a rinto. That's a varietal. A rinto. So we'll have to try that one. But a little bit of Viognier. That one we know. We have done. And an Anto Vaz. So really random white grapes in this one, you guys. Um, but meant to go also with um, some of the stronger cheeses on your plate. And then they say like curries and Asian foods, kind of just something kimchi, things that are also fermented would go really good with this wine. So that's my spiel on the wine. What came first, beer or wine? Do we know? Oh, do you know? You're I know. the professor. I know. <laughs> but I know cheese came probably just after wine. Yeah. A couple thousand BC. Mm -hmm. And it would have been made on accident when, when uh, should I, we, oh. there's, there's cave <laughs> writings in Mesopotamia of, of how cheese was made and it would have been just aged with, with the rennet in, with the, in the sacks, basically yeah. made from the animal stomachs. <laughs> we'll get into that another time. <laughs> animal stomachs. Should we let, do you want to taste the first cheese and then we'll have Bree do the next step? Oh, sure, sure. Um, so hopefully you've dug in already, but the first cheese <laughs> is... Is it gone? It's gone. Does anyone have any cheese left? Yes. Is the Good Mood, and it's the herby one. The Good Mood is a cow's milk cheese. It's actually made from Jersey cow milk. It's from Bavaria, which is a region in Germany. So they make a lot of Alpine-style cheeses, and, and that's where Munich is located. But it's probably the cheese capital of Germany. It's covered with all kinds of herbs, and... Um, there's a little bit of a coloring on the paste itself, and that's because it's cow's milk. They are, they are on a really rich and healthy diet, and Jersey cows produce a little bit less milk. They get a higher yield because it's high fat, and high fat is good for cheese. Um, this is aged for about two months, and it is coagulated with, um, with animal rennet. Um, so I have not tasted this one yet. It's a kind of a newer one. Um, Gina, do you want a piece? Yes, do you need it all? I left you a piece. That's so nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my first bite uh -huh. I've ever had of this cheese. Ever? Yes. Uh -huh. It's pizza like. Yes, <laughs> my favorite one. Pizza. Right? Yeah. Not our favorite one. We already got people like oregano or it's something. It's oregano. It has like a. Uh, tastes like pizza. You yeah. know what it tastes like? Yeah. Like Totino's pizza roll. Yes, on the inside. Put that on the tag. <laughs> this is delicious. I really like this. this is a, <laughs> <laughs> That's my expert <laughs> professor uh, opinion. Totino's pizza roll cheese. I like it. It goes good with the wine? That's good. Let's, let's find out. Well, Ooh, it brings out to me the, the funkiness of that cheese. Mm. Like on its own, it was all pizza, but with the wine to me, it's funk. All pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. But that's, that's the fun of mm. tasting them together. So, very good. I like that. All right. What do you Bree. think of the cheese, Bree? Did you taste it? Yeah. That yeah. Okay. We have Bree here. We didn't even have a Bree on the plate. Do we have a Bree? <laughs> <laughs> what were we thinking? How rude. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and use that same color that we already mixed up. And we're just going to add a little bit more blue. So same paintbrush, same color. And we're going to just do the background of the top. And so what we want to do is make a little variation in it. So put a little bit more of the blue up top and a little more of the white closer to the other items. So you can kind of just blend that on your canvas as you go along. And it does not have to be exact. Just kind of go with the flow on this. And so you've got a little bit of <clears throat> blue and white on your plate. Yes. And you're mixing it as you go. Yep. So you can have the sky as blue as you want it to be. Right. But Brie, if you do the white on the outside, is that what gives everything a glow? Like putting yes. a little bit of the white, like a yeah. little... Yeah, mm -hmm. gives a little more depth and makes the painting a little more fun that way. Oh, nice. nice. Okay, so now I just I just feel like I should be able to paint or do any of that, and I can't. I am awful if you ever play charades or anything. What, what's the Pictionary with me? <laughs> Don't put me on your team. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. You're creative, though. I am, but not so. Mm. Yeah, not so. I look, the stem is even popping. That's I feel like with doing a lot of these types of 
th these disciplines. It's about ref maybe Bree, you can give, tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's about, a lot of it is about there's talent, but then also repetition. Yes. You know, like just doing things over and over again, like the yeah. that, the ten thousand hours. For sure. Yeah. Either one. I think we can. I think art can just be a meditative form, but yeah. it's also something you can create just you know design wise or just for fun. Like there's a lot of different ways of looking at it. I, I um when 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 we went into quarantine in what March of 2020, uh -huh. we had one I think it was one week where we were totally shut down, and I I did a painting every night. Oh, that's right, you did. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna do a painting every night of the year. <laughs> How'd that go? No, didn't. didn't do that. <laughs> but it was a good thought. Maybe when I retire. Yeah. There you uh, go. But we, then we opened up and things got crazy busy again. But painting. But but I was, my point was going to be that. There's a huge difference between day one and day seven. Oh, yeah. Even seven days. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Mm -hmm. well, not for me. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. What do you think is the hardest thing to paint? Is it skies? Is it mm, people? Could you say, or well, people? Yeah, sure. I would no, say people. people. Mm. For me, I, I typically do more. I do a lot of beach scenes. I have not really gone to try doing people. Beach and. Outside nature, all that kind of stuff. I like painting that. Okay, so um, George, we have a friend out there in uh, Wino Land. George said there's a huge difference, and you are so right, between the paste of the um, the cheese of the good mood and then the herbs on the side. Yeah. And that's the that's why everybody you have to eat from the middle of the cheese to the rind and taste it every time because it's so different. If you put them on a plate and cut it up, you would think that was completely two different cheeses, uh -huh. right? Um, so yes, it's so good. I think yeah, the herb is better. Yeah, the interior, the paste alone, it's creamy, lovely cream, right? Yeah. But um, that would melt good on a pizza. I was gonna say that. Yeah. Speaking of the herbs, it would be a good melter. It's the same. A lot of the same herbs on the outside of that cheese are from are also on a cheese called Alp Blossom. Yes. Which is from Austria, but they all kind of work together um, to 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 bring a lot of these cheeses from that from that whole region um, to us. And uh, but I really got the the oregano. I'm pretty sure it was oregano. Super oregano. I would agree. And that's what's making a pizza like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um. Also, yeah, very good. But good, good call. I, I don't know. I just ate it all, though. <laughs> to know if just the interior of the paste would go uh, better with the wine or if it would be less funky than with the herbs. So I didn't try that way. If anybody has any left, you could try that and see which one pairs with the wine better. Just the rind or we've got an expert monger over here diving right in to do that. Um, or with the herbs. And I, sure. I don't have any left either. Because we eat them every time. Like so fast. We need two plates. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're still working on the skies. Everybody, I think I see skies going on. Yep, we see darker skies. Can't yeah. wait to see this finish. So just so. uh, kind of do a couple layers if it's looking see through right now. Just make sure you kind of go over it so it blends really well together. I think I see skies going, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Keep those skies coming. While they're making sky, um, Rob, should we go to cheese number two, maybe? Sure, yeah. Tell a little bit about it. Okay, so this is the one with the growth on it. <laughs> there you go. That would be this one is super funky looking. I mean, I gotta say, that is growth. Everybody see the growth? It's not gross. gross. <laughs> it's yeah. not gross growth. This is, uh, growth. I need to, the name, Robiola Vecchia Balasacina. Balasacina. <laughs> Balasacina. And if it looks, if you recognize kind of the look of it, it is um, from the same folks who produce our Taleggio which is a, just, it's like the most popular, classic, northern Italian washed rind cheese, which another word for washed rind cheese is stinky cheese. And uh, so the, the rind itself will be kind of like an orange, pinkish color. It has a nice, strong aroma. The paste is, is a little bit softer than the good mood. This is cow's milk. 
They, they're considering it a robiola, and robiolas are kind of a general style that come from northern Italy. They tend to be sheep or goat or mixed milk. This one is 100% cow's milk. And they, what they do when they make this is, um, telegio comes in a the square, they quarter the telegio to make this cheese. And then when they age it, the rind grows. And then um, the rind will also grow with the encouragement of a brine. And then they'll, they'll scrub it every couple days. Um, and it'll give it, give it this growth. The growth will, <laughs> the growth will grow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> once they wash it. This is super salty, but I like it. I mean, and it's creamy, but I get a ton of salt based compared to the last cheese. But I love this one with the wine, I have to say. Well, you said you mentioned Northern Italy when you talked about places mm -hmm. that where orange wine was popular. So this is, is kind of regional, and I can see it also being a contrasting pairing. Mm -hmm. um, so I get salty on the paste. I get a little grittiness and a little crunch on the rind. Definitely eat the rind on this one. Um, it's meant to be eaten. It's a natural rind, and uh, I think it's delicious. I think it is, too. The funky growth. It's probably my favorite part. <laughs> to me, it smells like a <laughs> it smells it smells like a pickle to me. Are you getting yeah. pickle notes? It's I'm getting pickle some sort of a pickle note, a dill pickle oh, note. Okay. I don't know why. Yeah, I like it. You're supposed to eat that. You are supposed to eat it. So Marie <laughs> brings up, and she's like, "What? You cannot eat that." And we say, I peeled that. It's you peeled it off. You got to try it. So <laughs> she peeled it off. This is so good to know. But see, this is a time to try it. It can look so. This does not look like. It looks like you try dropped it. With it. Okay. It looks like we dropped this on the floor, and we did <laughs> did not. Um, but you should eat it and try it. But that's where the funk lies in any of these cheeses. So um, give it a go. But to me, it's very pickly. And you said with the grape, it's good. I haven't tried it yet, oh. but <laughs> you try it first. <laughs> I think it will be. Okay. But it's great with the wine. I have to say, um, Carol, our friend Carol, mm. loves oh, it with the jam. Yeah. We need to talk about the jam. Did you taste oh. it yet? Great to see you today, Carol. Apricot jam. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, George, you were asking the jam is apricot. So have you tried it? Carol loves it. This robiola with the jam. You like it with the grape? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I like it with the wine. Well, so I was going for the. It's salty. It's strong. It's a little pungent. So I thought a nice balance would be something sweet and that, kind of that burst of the grape. Oh, it's really salty. It's Ooh. really good with the sweet stuff, everybody. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do that one with the grape. It's awesome. And the jam. Awesome. Nice. You tried with the jam? <laughs> no, I will not. Oh, yeah, well. All right, Bree, what's next? I think the skies are done. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the bottom part now since we already have our blue out. And you can just kind of brush your brush off on the plate. You don't really need to clean it since we're using blue. And whatever white's on there will just kind of blend in. But we're going to want a, just a touch of black with your blue. So if you need more blue, add a little more. To me, black is scary. Like, that'd be hard to cover up, right? Is black, black the scariest color? Black is to cover up, mm -hmm. yes. Just but a little black? Just a dot. You don't need much. Mostly blue, just a little dot or two of black, and that's just to give it some, uh, you know, some depth on the bottom here. So we're going to start with the black dot and the blue. So you were just testing your color there by dipping a little black too? Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to blend it right on. I still have a little white in my brush, that's why the color looks a little different, but you can just add a little more blue right on top of that. It'll blend right in. You want for like a midnight color, it looks like to me. Yeah, just I like a little it. darker on the bottom. Okay. Give it a difference from the sky here. From the sky. What are we painting? The table? The yes. tablecloth table. Mm hmm. Yeah. So making it a dark azure. You no? Know? <laughs> yeah. Azure. Blue. Azure. <laughs> azure. And then don't forget the bottom again. <laughs> oh yes, that's that's a painter. That's what you're an expert if you do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like when they're painted. Some people choose not to paint the sides. Okay. Yeah. I think you it do. looks finished. Though. Okay. Yeah. Um. First, George, <laughs> he ate the cheese with the rosemary. Did we eat rosemary yeah. today? We love rosemary, and George knows it. So he loved it with the rosemary, the um, robiola. But we ate those two. We can't try it, George, because we ate the one piece. We got <laughs> anything left. We're out of control today. Oh, no, it's so oh my god, but it's so true. And great with the jam. And I'm, we're with you, Carol. I tried it with the jam. It's good too. Mm. But the grape, you need that with that salt. 
Oh, yeah, I, sure I tried the jam and the grape, which I really like. We were jamming with that. <laughs> the wine is <laughs> growing on me again. Oh, very nice. Rob, I don't know if I should have stacked <laughs> the bottles of all year. <laughs> you know? We can, you know, what we can do is like, we can rank them, maybe, if you remember. Oh, yeah, can we remember like standouts? We'll have to maybe do that with everybody. Um, standouts from the year. Yeah. Uh, faves. I have a couple in my head that jump up. I mean, wow, okay. Were there any that you didn't Don't like? Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> there was a couple that were not my favorites yeah. compared to others. Let's put it that way. I have yeah. that with, with cheeses where they're, it's not really for me, but I appreciate, I know why some people would like it. I mean, right. I'm, I'm not a huge mm-hmm. fan of the triple creams, which are probably our most <gasps> popular cheeses. Sacre I know. Mm-hmm. And even like the aged goudas, I don't go for a lot. Those are the most popular cheeses. Yeah. But that's not just me. Not your not your bag, baby. Oh, yeah. Just sometimes, yeah. but not usually. But not usually. Yeah. I'm going to say, Taleggio's not normally my bag, yeah. but it's interesting that I love this. Yeah. Uh, even though I'm not such a fan of the Taleggio. Yeah, I really like this. Yeah. I don't, and I don't go for goat cheeses a lot, but then when we taste them on these, I tend Oh, to you're, then you go to them? Well, it, I, I think it's partially because I... I it's, it feels new because I don't eat them all the time. So then, when I do, it's uh, then it just yeah, yeah it, it hits like I've had for a while. Sure, sure, sure. No, well, that's good. So I think everybody's doing well, Brie, out there, um, painting in the uh, Zoom land, uh huh, <laughs> and getting it, everybody's doing their dark claws. And I see more going there, more going there. Okay. So is it dark important to go there? like the same direction on your strokes? Like that's a yeah. good question. Yeah. Great question. So. <laughs> I usually like to do long, um, soft strokes as far as you can across. Um, when the paint brushes are smaller, though, you just you go as far as you can. And then, um, like with this, since it's looking see-through again, I'd like to do a second layer just so that it really pops when it's finished. Um, yeah. And then it really depends if you have different styles of brushes, too, how you use them. But for these, I try to keep it simple. And yeah. To learn the yeah. techniques, yeah, so you've got to start. Uh-huh. Now yours looks a little thick. Like I'm, if you, it looks like you could have some texture on there. The thicker you make the paint, yes. you could do that. Yeah. So, so yeah. I don't know. This one or the other one I had painted a different color. I painted a di- different color just to test a few colors. And when I repainted it, it just got thicker and thicker. So it just depends how many coats of paint okay. you have on there. And you don't obviously have to wait till it dries before you do the next nope, not layer. No, it can. It does help to get it really even. But uh, not when you are just painting like this, I would just put it right on top. So just going around the outline that you did to start. Mm-hmm. So if I wanted to have like Van Gogh, would I have to, like wait for it to dry and like squeeze a whole tube on there and <laughs> squeeze the tube? That could know. be your technique. That could be your. <laughs> <laughs> on the spot, on the spot. Yeah. Ben knows methods. <laughs> okay. So Carol, jam and rosemary. Oh, that's a good one. The, okay, you try it. We could do it with the next cheese. Yeah. Jam and rose, the apricot jam with rosemary petal and any of the cheeses would be spectacular. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Yes. And rubs in it. <laughs> rosemary. Uh, I'm all over it. Yeah, you're on it. And the lavender. Did everybody get a lavender on the thing too? That's is that? Oh, basil. Okay. Basil top. Oh, lavender. Yeah. Oh, La- yeah. It's both. La- they got lavender <laughs> and basil. <laughs> yes. Oh, lavender. I didn't see the little. Oh, you do. Great. Lavender, basil, oregano. You have a little uh, herb garden in there today. Try this it is, all. Yeah, I mean the smell is just it's undeniable. Good. I mean, I just go walking down the neighborhoods, and if I see a rosemary bush, you can eat them. This, all of this is completely edible, so try it with something, ladies. I mean, it's so good. But I'll walk down the street, and I'll see a rosemary bush or a lavender bush, and I'm always doing this. Because I just want to eat. No one talking. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> You and my husband the same. He's like, you do not know what has happened there. But I do. That's a good point. But I do like this too. Is that so yummy? Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I now, can don't smell eat it from Can you smell there? it from yeah. there? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's so, so good. Oh, but I love it. What are you eating now? I got excited. Right? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. What, did. what are we on? What are we on, Professor? I had a piece of rosemary on for you. Oh, you did. Thank you. I thought it was... I'm actually... Rosemary, <laughs> apricot jam, 
and Garocha. Oh. So, delish. Garocha. Garocha. So, mm -hmm. Bad name. Garocha. But great cheese. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the name is. It's like um, Cata Catalan. That's the. Catalan, it's yeah. From Cat Catalonia. Mm -hmm. The cheese is made just north of Barcelona, almost um, at the border with, with France in the foothills of the Pyrenees. They make a lot of goat's milk cheeses in the region, a few sheep's milk cheeses, no um, cow's milk. But um, so this one is 100% goat's milk. It is aged for about two months. Um, it's, it's unique because I would say the majority of goat's milk cheeses are younger, meaning they're going to be soft, um, you know, two weeks to a month or so in age. This is, um, it's got a firmer texture. It also has a natural rind. Growth. Speaking of rinds, it's growth. growth on the outside. <laughs> it's got a growth. <laughs> you can eat that. It looks scary, but um, it's totally up to you. I they, love it. Yeah, they just they just kind of rub it down as the cheese is aging. They they smack it up, flip it, rub it, rub it smack down. Smack it. That's a Belgian. That's a Belgian devo song. Smack it up. <laughs> but they 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 will flip it um, every couple of days. They will kind of scrub down any any growth on the rind so that they'll pat it down and it'll become this kind of grayish uh, color and this um, this gritty texture. Yeah. But it's natural. It's natural. I taste the goat. You you can tell a goat, I think, right out of the gates. Pretty much that's the most distinctive flavor to me. Mm. But the rind, I love it because it tastes like a cave wall, like mm. a stone or something to me. I love it. This cheese looks like a stone. Mm. It's gray and this big and it looks like you could use them as pavers mm -hmm. in your garden i mean they're just it's a beautiful cheese and i love the rind it has um acidity to me though it's definitely like chewing on my tongue i, I haven't tried it i told you the story before but <laughs> when I, I was in barcelona a few years ago and i called i um called the cheesemaker and i asked if i could oh, come that's by. right i saw that read the pictures yep it was uh easter sunday so he wasn't making cheese but he said i'll oh, come by and you can really see the the place and he um so he made the cheese with the with the curd, and then he had horses on his property, and he saved all the whey, and he fed it to the horses, and so nothing went to waste. It was really cool, and um, he didn't speak any English, but um, he gave me a bunch of cheese, but he gave me like two stones, <laughs> the two cheeses, and they're like two or three pound yeah. cheeses, uh -huh. and he told me, take them with, with you, and, and so I, for for like the next week, I was just like sitting on cathedral steps eating garrocha, like just lopping off oh. chunks from this big wheel. I mean, how perfect is yeah. that? Sounds I mean, just in your backpack, yeah. your little yeah. wheel of cheese. It's hard, and when it when the rind, when it's intact, when it's a full wheel, it doesn't even have to be refrigerated. No, exactly, which is so perfect. That's why cheese is such a beautiful thing. It's not mayonnaise. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know how it was really good? Because at lunchtime, everything closes down, so I couldn't get a meal at noon. And probably it's every two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then they don't have dinner until like midnight. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> you couldn't, yeah, that's not, that's not your stuff. Sorry for the background noise, but hopefully everybody's still, still with us, still with us. All right, we, how are we doing on the tables? Everybody's, I think their tables are close. I see here and out in the, we're good out here in uh, Zoom land. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go next to the cheese and we're gonna clean your brush off to do this. So go ahead and dip it in some water, not your drink. Your not the drink, yeah. Don't, 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 too don't, don't dip it in your orange wine, dip it in your um, clear water jug. So yes. when you clean your paintbrush, just gently go side to side in the water. And then on your paper towel, just go side to side like this. You don't want to smush it, jam it, so you break all your bristles. <laughs> um, so we're going to go ahead and get yellow with a little bit of white. So yellow and white is the next step, everybody. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that looks? 
Oops, we have a question. Uh, Rian, how do we do that? Which part is black? Or do it all yellow first? So the very top is going to be black. So it's just going to be a very thin triangle on the very top. So I'll show you with the outline again with the yellow. Kind of just cut off the top in a triangle form. Oh, okay. So this very top piece will be black as well as the outline. And then we'll just keep this inside the yellow. And we're going to add a little bit of orange in there too to make it this. Uh, to get it that color. color. Okay, so let's talk about colors of cheese because you can tell a lot about what milk may be a cheese is made of based on the color, don't you think? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. I was going to use my garotas. I have no you ate it. <laughs> so animals. Did I. I have no show and tell anymore. <laughs> it's all in my belly. But if you notice, the uh, the garrocha was was bone white, the color on the paste, and that's because mm -hmm. the um, the color from cheeses comes from something called beta carotene, which is in plants. And so when when the animals eat the plants, they ingest it, and then um, for goats, they they use all of that vitamin, and so none of it comes out in their milk. Interesting. So that's why I didn't even know that. That's why their that's why their milk is always white. Um, for sheep and cows, they do not use all of that beta carotene, and so some of it does come out in their milk. Ah. And so for sheep and cows' milk, there will oftentimes, depending on how healthy their diet is or how much of this beta carotene they eat. So if they're out on a lot of pasture and wildflowers and herbs, it'll have a kind of a darker tint to it because um, it'll, it'll they don't um, use all of it. And so, um, because typically that means that the that the cheese is healthier or that the animal's on a healthier diet, cheese makers and cheese mongers noticed that a long time ago, and they started coloring cheeses. Cheese, right? <laughs> yeah. This one's worth more than this. Art one. Artificially, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like this is this is better, and it just that kind of got out of control, and um, so we see now yellow cheddars and orange cheddars or orange other cheeses. White cheddars? Yeah. I mean, you see them all. Yeah. And that's, now they use a, a, a dye called annatto, which is a natural dye. It's flavorless, it's it's, uh, it's it's innocuous, but it's all really for show now. Yes, but to has, get the color. Yeah. You know what would be a good cheese, which we haven't seen yet though, but for color? Turmeric. That's like the oh, yeah. the spice du jour, uh -huh. right? Everybody's eating yeah. turmeric, everything. Turmeric, Isn't healthy, like healthy. Cure yeah. But it would make it an amazing color, yeah. like annatto. Annatto makes that golden well, sunset color. Um, oh, turmeric would make a great color. Well, they so they they stop. Mm -hmm. They use annatto because it's flavorless, and so yes. that they, they thought that that was beneficial, or at least uh, they didn't want to take away from the flavor of the cheeses. Because I I've heard of carrot juice and using like marigold petals, flower <laughs> petals, yeah. So all yeah. kinds of weird stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So when you see the white cheddar versus the orange cheddar, the the color really has no bearing on the cheese being better or worse or or anything. That's all really for show now. Um, so um, what's really going to have a more of an effect on a cheddar, especially, is the age yeah. of the cheese. And so if you if you have a cheddar, we have a ten year old cheddar that's orange because they use a dye. And then we have white cheddars that are six months or whatever. So the, the orange cheddar is a lot stronger and a lot more, has a lot more oomph because of the age. Age, and, and this was a, yeah, it's an interesting question. So here, with Carol, which is the best cheddar? How to answer that question? It's honestly, it's whatever you, you prefer, Carol. Yeah, because some people like it sweeter, some like salty, some like age, some like crunch. Yeah. Some like some like orange. They don't want a cheddar that's not orange, if right? You, maybe don't. it's in your head, you know. Like if <laughs> if um, if you like a really really sharp kind of like sulfury sharp cheddar, you want a really aged like a ten year just just cheddar bomb, like yeah. And then if, but if you want something that has more like nuance to it, and yes. some of the words that we use to describe the farmhouse traditional cheddars, it sounds like they're not complimentary. Um, but they can smell like oh. dirt or like a soccer field or like grass. <laughs> I love that. The essence of soccer field. <laughs> or they, they get aged in caves and so they're kind of like river, like a stony or li like a limestone-y. Yes, so of then it tastes, which I, it's like licking it. I 
didn't. No, I didn't. Okay, but I did as a kid suck on stone yeah. rocks. I would pick up a rock. Oh, like river stones. Because I love that smell. Yeah. I love that taste. Yeah, they're kind of like it's like that. Yeah. So I still love those cave ag things that taste like a stone. So if if you cave like that, yeah. there's a. There's there's one from Vermont called Clockbound Cheddar, yeah. and it's um it's it's a really good kind of domestic version of the English farmhouse cheddars. But um, there's a handful of them, and we're always rotating. Like we'll probably have, you know, ten cheddars at any given time, different all different styles, different colors. So nice. Okay. Carol said something about rat cheese. Can we ask about that more? <laughs> I think I just said rat. Maybe I need. Well, I think the rat cheese, like in the cartoons, is always like a you know the oh. yellow cheddar. That's probably oh, what she's referring to. so then that's his, in the head, right? Yeah, that that yellow's bad. It kills the rats. Like it's what you put in the yes into the trap. <laughs> yeah, but I read Rob that meat mices mice actually <laughs> prefer. Oh God! So here we go. Uh, peanut the, butter over cheese. I think the, the plural is mice. Mice. <laughs> the mice and the mises <laughs> like. Peanut butter over cheese? Are you kidding I've me? I've heard that too. But I've heard that in your mousetrap, you might not save the cheese and eat it yourself, but yeah. put peanut butter in the mousetrap is what I heard. <laughs> How's everybody doing on the colors? I see lots of yellow. Oh, and, and Brie, you've got like a more, um, I want to call it green color going today. Yeah, so a couple things I want to add. Didn't get to say there, but if you add just a little bit of red to that yellow that we had going, um, it'll bring out this color a little bit more orange than that solid, like, Bright yellowish color that was coming. Ooh, so uh, just little brushes. It looks like you just kind of whisked the yeah. red in there. Well, I mixed it together with that yellow, that okay. light yellow color we had. Just add a little bit of red, and then um, kind of just keep brushing it in, so it does look a little creamy, like you said. And then you can also use that same color up on the label of the wine bottle, but I would just add maybe a little more white to it, so it looks a little different, but very similar. And then. From there, once you get that going, I just want to give a few next steps. Um, we're going to do the orange of the wine bottle and the orange of the wine glass. And that's going to be the same colors we currently have mixed. Just add more red to that little peachy yellow we've got going on. And it'll come out to be more like this brighter orange, like this, our wine here. And let's go ahead. And matching the color perfect to oh. the wine. <laughs> Yeah, it's all coming. This is all matching. This is a complimentary uh, <laughs> painting and pairing party tonight. Yeah. Not a contrasting, but a complimentary. Touche. Touche, yeah. There's so many of them, then you just. <laughs> it's very, very true. Did we eat all the cheese? Well, I just had a bite of the chocolate, which I wasn't Stop. supposed to. <laughs> You're I supposed to. Dude. I saved this. some for you. Okay, here. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for the last cheese? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Manchango? Man, well, often, you say Manchango? often mispronounced. Mm -hmm. The cheese is Manchego. Mm -hmm. M A C H E G, right? Oh, you sound like A L E X, like Alexander <laughs> Hamilton. A L E X, Ian. I, just, I had to think really hard. <laughs> M A. Let's do a song on that. M A N G. M A N G. I was close. I got is the M A. Is she I got M A. Okay. Uh, Manchego <laughs> means simply that this cheese is from La Mancha. La Mancha. La Mancha. Manchego. Manchego. And so it's as simple as that. Cheeses, especially the old world classics, all based on place. This one is from La Mancha. It's always made with sheep's milk. It's not just sheep, any sheep, it's a particular breed of sheep that is from La Mancha, and they're called La Mancha sheep. They, um, so high fat content, which gives it a nice rich flavor. They're always aged a minimum of three months. Mm -hmm. What do we have today? A six, I think. This one is six months. Mm -hmm. And so the longer it ages, the more, um, the more moisture will, will come out of the cheese, so the, the firmer it'll be, the grittier it'll get. Um, so this is what six months does. It's so... I, I mean, Manchego, that is, this is Spain's most popular export, oh, yeah. honestly, is Manchego cheese. Um, and when you go there, you know how you go to a Mexican restaurant, you have chips and salsa. You go to Spain, you get your little Manchego and olives. That is, that's, that's your just appetizer. That's just a common, 
thing. It's like putting bread on the table. <laughs> oh, we love manchego on Or like a, a ham and cheese sandwich in Spain is manchego, yeah. serrano oh, jamón, stop, 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 stop. and like crusty bread. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's, it's kind of like, it just needs like a bottle of wine with it too. That's mm-hmm. why they drink so much. But look at so them. They're a bottle of Rioja. A bottle of Rioja, a bottle of orange, of our Artera, uh-huh. Spain. Exactly. Portugal. Close. Yeah. Close. Close. Near the border of Spain. Yeah. So they have a, um, there's a little like a crosshatch design on the rind. And uh, back when, you know, hundreds of years ago, this cheese was aged in Esparto grass and it gave it that ah, the design. Breath, the look. Yeah, now it's now it's just a, a form that they press it into. But it's all for, again, tradition. Just like they fit there on the roof. <laughs> the, um, if I were a rich man. <laughs> Teresa, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, but Manchego is uh, probably the cheese that Don Quixote had on the back of his donkey when he was riding around fighting windmills mm-hmm. with uh, his buddy. You think that was it? I think it might have been. It it been. They Sancho said they, Sancho Panza was his buddy, and uh, but in the book it says that they had an aged Use milk, E W E, an oh. aged use milk cheese. Oh, it had to be Manchego. It had to be Manchego, or something very similar. Yeah, I was just, I was just in an airport, and a woman, I thought I was bad. I had salami in my bag. <laughs> she had a quarter wheel of Manchego in her <laughs> bag, and of course they're like swiping it down. What is this? I know that's the best cheese out there. Yeah, so good. Well, a good thing with Manchego, kind of like the garochas, you don't even have to put it in the fridge. No, um, you know. especially when it's when it's really old, it can just sit out. I mean, you don't want to let it sit out if it's 120 outside, but I mean, conditions like this is totally fine. <laughs> okay, we've gone on to the wine bottles. We're babbling away. Bree's painting away. So you went orange. How did you get the orange? Just more red. So in your mix? yeah, add a little more red to that yellow uh, white combo you have going on. And if it's not looking right, just go straight to yellow and red, and then you can add a little white to make it a little more creamy. But You did look so good. Bree, look at how you match this. Right? Wow. Yeah. yeah, really well done. The colors match. Getting darker. That one's a little darker. That's okay. Because with the orange wines, do you know what makes it more orange? Uh, more skins? More age? S- more seeds and no, age. No. Yes. The longer they leave the seeds, the crushed seeds in the steeping, you know, fermenting, the oranger it will become. So it's the seed that makes it more, even more than the skin. So there you go. Professor, I gave, gave you talk you something <laughs> <Yeah>. today. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, somebody's got like a purple color. I love it. <laughs> see, this is what it, you got to see the people's, uh, everybody's style. Everyone's outside. interpretation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I think that's very, very good. You know, it's uh, kind of like, it's kind of like cheeses and people's favorites. Like there's no wrong, there's no wrong answers. Mm-hmm. In art, that's what's kind of cool about it too. Art, art is a great thing. I'm, I feel like I'm not artistic. Well, I'm not painty. I'm not drawing painty artistic by any means. So I'm always in awe to make this happen. But look at it's coming together. Have you tried it? I have. I did one of these, a, a painting in vino. I probably did more vino than painting. <laughs> uh, but it was super fun. Do I? I where is my painting? What did I paint? But it was good. I would like to do more. So I'm gonna. I'm, I'll crack it. I think it's crack. one of those things where you gotta trudge through. Like you gotta. You gotta. Oh yeah. Just, just give it a go. And yeah. then but give it a go. And once you start yeah. seeing, just like anything, when you start seeing improvements, oh, okay, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're doing more of the orange. Still doing the wine bottle, everybody. Yeah. Oh, and now you're gonna do the same color scheme on the wine yeah. itself. <laughs> if the lines are crooked, that's Lame, Annie. <laughs> so same color, obviously, from yeah. the wine bottle to the wine glass. Yeah, and you can change the color if you want it darker or lighter, however mm-hmm. you want it to look. That is perfectly fine. 
Are you still painting? Did you paint? Have you painted since the first few weeks of the? Not really. I've done maybe a couple. So but I try to like do some sketching and things like that. Okay. I have this weird thing where I I have um when we when we're even business ideas, I will I'll sketch things like um. I don't know, the way I want like a, a room to look. Or okay. Like, you know, like, oh, I want this here, or do this. Or, or like, a, or even s this. sketching like, um, almost like graphs, or like, um, uh, like, uh, almost like a spreadsheet, or yeah. like, I don't know, like, I'll sketch things out just to help me like, sketch think about. Sketch spreadsheet. Yeah, in, in okay. like a weird way. <laughs> weird, okay, I'll take it. Everybody's painting good, so now, I think we're, everybody's painting. Marcy, Lynn, yeah, pretty good. It's all good. Just when you've got too much wine, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. How's everyone doing on the wine glass? Is the wine glass filling in? I think it is. Um, are these water paints? Or what is special? Is this some? Um, these are just acrylic mm -hmm. paints. They're water based. Okay. And where did you, can you get them at any art store or yes. can you just, yep. it's just fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but that's a lot of paint that are in these um, two kits. Oh yeah. The kits. Yeah. Uh -huh. Two ounces of these. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it'll go a long way. You could do a lot of painting sure. with those. Yeah. If you've got the kit, then you can definitely take this and go do your own paintings later too. And what about these? Yeah. Can you buy these already made like yeah. this? Yeah. You can buy the canvas. They mm -hmm. sell them in packs at uh, Michael's. Good deal for a pack of them if you want. Uh, single is a little more expensive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you if you do, like do something and we don't like it, can I paint over it? Just paint all white on yeah. it and redo it. You can. And then and then when like hundred years from now, I was gonna say then they'll be able to get the magnifying glass or yeah. whatever it is. That was a Brzezinski yeah. under there, but they <laughs> painted over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a certain kind of paint that you can put on top of it. Yeah. Or just right on top. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. If ours is, if ours is a little too yeah. peachy, should uh -huh. we add red to make it more orange? Um, more orange. Okay. I kind of see it. It's a it's the bottle. More it's more of a peachy color. No. Peach and you want Almost it like a salmon color. color. But okay. So should we add you more red? You want it darker orange or lighter? Well, we want it to be more orangey, like yours. So a little red. <laughs> red. And then maybe some white. Okay. Oh, if it's too peach, too light, don't yes. add white, sorry. Just, Just add red. red. Yeah. Brian. Yes. Mine's too yellow. Oh, there's red right there. Add red. <laughs> but red, can I mix yeah, it here? Yeah, you can put just add a red on there. <laughs> that orange color you have. That's okay. okay. Okay, so we're hearing everybody, if you're too yellow out there and you need a little more of that orange hue, uh -huh. add a little bit of red. red. Yes. Just blend it in there. And okay. you could do it on your plate yeah. first to see if you get the color you want, right? Yeah. Mix them together like and see if it kind of works, and right? And if you're too red, add more yellow. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, add red. <laughs> oh, yeah, something like that. There's always things like that. Okay, so everybody's got their wine in their glass. Their cheese paste is done. The sky and the table are done. And the wine bottle are done.
We've got some creative juices over here, I see. I yeah. room with the purple. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're making that to go with your room. I see. Yes. I see. Very nice. <laughs> That's really good. Do you wear purple socks when you walk in that room just so you match? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know there's a store in Seattle dedicated to all things purple? No It's way. huge. Yeah. It's near Pike Market, and it's everything in it is purple, and it's about the size. It's a good size store. Wow. All purple. You would love it. <laughs> <laughs> so the grapes can be a little tricky. Show you a trick. Ooh, she made like an olive green there. Yeah, so it's just Ooh. yellow with a dot of blue for the green. And then what I want to do is have a little white and a little yellow on hand because we're just going to blend these grapes right on the canvas so they have just a variation in color there. Oh. So you're not mixing it on the plate in the color, you're keeping all of those colors separate yeah. and then blending on the paint. Well, once you mix your green. Okay. So we're going to just start with the green. And we're going to kind of make circles, um, and then we're just put like a dab of white, dab of yellow to add some color on the edge. And you're just going to keep doing that until you go all the way around. That's a tough one. Yeah, that's yeah, a good these are a little That would do me in. This is advanced. We're now in 201. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we were at 101. <laughs> we've gone beyond what, yeah. We had to have grapes. <laughs> so after you got your shade of green, do that as the main, but then touch it up with a hint of yellow and a hint of white. Yes, More just white. add a little bit while you're making your circle. You probably wouldn't do it. I couldn't do this yet. Yeah. And they're going to overlap a bit too, and that's fine. So when we come back with the black, we're just going to add a little uh, shading to make it pop a bit. Uh, 
that, that, that was how I learned about, about Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, so I did some, some research, yeah. and I was like, oh, that's, that's where wine comes from. Comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go, though. I didn't go. I didn't go. Can't we? Um, but she was telling people that she was going to Georgia, and everyone thought she was going to to the southeastern yes. United States. <laughs> yes, to know that Georgia is. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Okay, so the main grape, you know we talked about New York being the one that can grow a grape mm. that makes orange wines. Yeah. The main grape is called, I'm going to pronounce this right, Akratzatelli. 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 That sounds very Russian, Georgia is. Yes, that's how uh, it's, it's spelled. Yeah. It's, uh, spelled uh, it's spelled R-K-A-T-S-I-T-E-L. Arcratzatelli. <laughs> Arcratzatelli. So that's the main it's predominant it's grape. Is there a question we back there? Question. Well, I looked up the Greek vessel word, but I can't What's the word? <laughs> what is it? With the Q. With the Q. It's a O E N O C H O E. It's called it. It's an ancient yeah. Greek word for wine pour. Oh, I yeah, no. <laughs> I still don't know it. <laughs> it's, it's a wine jug. A wine like jug, but with a funky <laughs> name. Yes. Okay, like thank you, Dawn. Amphora. That's what I'm thinking of. Is a uh, transport vessel. So Am just keep amphora. Going. That's the one you're thinking. Yeah. And that's that is in here. The amphora. Yeah. That's there. It is. Dawn, thank you. Our fact checker. <laughs> fact checker. Hey, do you that's know the idea. the word in Italian? Okay, let me do these grapes. And for Auburn and orange. So if you see this on an Italian wine bottle, everybody, it could be an orange wine. Oh. You know the word. Um, can I guess? Yeah. Is it something like Narang, Naranja, N-A-R? Uh, no, good. Oh. No, it's with an R. <laughs> <laughs> why close, but not close at all. <laughs> why would, why would a good guess? Yeah, that's what I would think. <laughs> Romato. Romato. So that's kind of like a tomato, yeah. romato. Romato or? It means Auburn in Italian. R so romato or romato? This is a romato. <laughs> it's a romato if you're from the USA. It's a romato or a romato. Romato is Auburn. Okay. Italian. Let's call the whole thing off. Yes, let's call the whole thing off because we cut them off. They had too much. Um, France, do you know what regions are the most, where you'll find the most orange wines in France? Oh. Oh gosh! Any thoughts of where that might be? Well, so where did you say you said Slovenia, Northern Italy, Slovenia, Northern Italy, Austria, that and Georgia were the biggest places. So those are places for those wine. are all kind of mountainy places. So maybe like uh, Alpine. Leave it to the professor. <laughs> the Jura, Jura okay. region of France has most of the orange wines that they produce. I'm so like that's the kids in the spelling bee who like, I ask you, you know, I, I put it all together. I just and then you ask questions yeah, back to the yeah. question, yeah, to get the answer. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And I'm trying to think what other, oh, so do you know when the first orange wines appeared in the US? Um, I will say in the early 1900s. No, 1997. Oh. <laughs> 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 in the late 1900s. <laughs> okay. But I, I didn't know that either. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? But yeah, so they've only been around for about 20 years, and now it's like, is it trendy, or is it good? Is it, you know? I was thinking, like, New York, and then I was thinking, like, influx of, um, like, immigrants, you know, like, uh, the Italian immigrants and stuff. Like, a lot of them were coming yeah. in the early 1900s. So That's true. That it's, a good, it's a good, valid, <laughs> logical thinking. All right, Bree, what are we on next? We're still, oh, look at our grapes. As we're babbling, look at how, they are swirly grapes. So these are more swirly than these. So this is so you can really see different. Like you can see a difference. Yeah. Did you get this? Yes. Yeah. So Brush I feel through. like when I'm, it's just me and I'm super focused, I'll go over it. It takes a little longer. But a different style, yes, right? Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then um, for these, we're going to come back at the end and add some black outline. But for now, we're going to move back to the wine glass and do the background here. I forgot to add that in earlier. So we're just going to clean out our brush and get the blue that we still have on our plate. And if we don't have any more, just white with a little bit of blue to just go in the background of the top of the glass. Ah, so you don't want the glass to be pure white because that is too off-putting. Yeah. Yeah, you need it to be a little bit of a shadow in there. Yeah. Oh, the light. Well, because you can, very, see the, light. you can see the blue sky oh, through, the glass. through the glass. Oh. Yeah. So, uh -huh. just remember you're going to come back up here and make <laughs> this last part. So it's interesting, you're kind of, she's reshaping the top, you're reshaping the top of the glass a little bit. Yeah. 
and that's okay. I saw it show you guys, but we're going to come back with blacks and outline them. You've got to save the black for last. You did some blue first, and then... So, yeah, just add white and then a little blue to the white. Okay. So it's that light blue again. Yes. Okay. It's just going to match mm -hmm. the back, but the make side. it as light as you can out of the blue you've used. I gotcha. Okay. That's great. You can get a little sky blue going on. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Oh, she's got a, yeah, really lots of sky. So could you be in charge, like if the orange was still wet, would, would that be dangerous? You could mush it together, no? It's okay. Okay. No mushing? <laughs> I would be like, it'd be mud. Everything would be mud because I would drag through the wet other color. I had problems when I would mix like, like the wrong color. colors and they would just turn brown. That's what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. just gotta so real pale. Keep trying until you find it. Yeah. And when you're doing outlines, you don't want too much paint in your brush. So kind of clear it off a bit. So very light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can get a nice sharp edge. <laughs> Were you always into art? And this uh, yeah, I, yeah. And as a kid I painted a lot um, and in high school and then I went to college for graphic design and then I started biotech for marketing, which I also did graphic design there. Um, and then I really wanted to paint again. <laughs> right. So I just kind of was doing it on the side for a while and started the blog for fun when my daughter was born and then you do this, yeah. <laughs> so I painted just at home for fun, and then I decided to have these type of events, um, just locally, different areas. And yeah. There we are. <laughs> Channel the creative. The rest mm -hmm. is history. Yeah. <laughs> Bring a little more white in there, lighten it up a bit. But it seems to me. Have we always started with the lightest colors first? Because it's easier to paint over the lighter colors, yes. yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would be the coolest cheese to paint? You're gonna okay, so you know where this started, can I tell you? Has everyone seen Salvador Dali's The Clocks yeah. painting? So clocks, if everybody can picture this one, everybody has seen it. It looks like a bunch of clocks that are like melting, melting and drooping, mm -hmm. but he based the clocks on um, warm camembert. So he must have been a camembert fan. And the camembert, you know, when it gets soft and oozy, it, it, it droops like this, so he, he made his clocks droop like a warm camembert. He said that he yeah. was eating a piece of camembert and then he fell asleep and had a dream of melting clocks. I think he passed out. <laughs> <laughs> or he had more than just... <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I started. I'm like, Bree, I kind of thought of this melting camembert. Maybe we'll do something a little more basic than that. Yeah. You know, a little simpler to start. That'll be the next <laughs> class. Yeah. I think like a blue class. cheese would be fun. Like a you know blue vein with like different... Oh, blue vein. Be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the little dots and the blue. But look at... And it's coming together. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to do the last step now is black and we're going to add the top of our cheese with this. And we're going to mostly use black, but if you want to add a little bit of white um, to muddle the cheese on top there, you can. And then you also may want to use a little bit of white highlight here and there as we finish the painting up. And then also, while you're doing this, if you have any areas that are still um, see-through, you might want to do another layer of that color. Was I supposed to paint the stem of the wine glass a certain color? Oh, we're going to do black with the stem. Just, yeah, just and then black. we can add a little bit of the orange um, down the middle. Oh, okay. While we're doing the black. We'll just kind of go back. Oh, that's what I was going to say. We're going to move to your thin brush now. So that's for outlining thin yes. brush? Yep. Okay. On the other side. Dawn, do you have a question? No, I was waiting to buy the Okay. 
questions. No questions. And everybody's right. painting. I see the painters are painting. The drinkers are drinking. I keep yeah. forgetting to drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I like your technique with the, uh, the way you uh, positioning it upside down for upside yourself. Down. <laughs> yeah, you're painting Here's upside why. down. <laughs> ah. I'm and kind of messy. <laughs> When you get paint on your said cell. Picasso used to do that. No. Oh, yeah? I don't know. <laughs> He's making it up. Don't listen. <laughs> Maybe a word he hey, says. Hey, I'm impressed. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. You want to walk you through the wine glass real quick? We'll yes, because I love this highlight you did here. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So we'll just start with the black outline first. Um, so the top is just that nice little thin oval. To me, black scares me because, like, what if you mess this up and really yeah, so bump I'm, yourself? I'm used to painting <laughs> on the table too, not like this. So, mm -hmm. but we'll figure it out. <laughs> so just take your time, and if you mess up like that, just keep going. <laughs> and you can also just bring in that other brush, kind of go right back over it, and then uh -huh. it up again. Downtown, yeah. so that art store has uh, everything, and like I want to buy so all of it. Yeah. Like I want all those markers, I want all those paints. I don't know what I would do with them, but they're beautiful. You know what I love? Like artist studios, like big studios with yeah. the cameras and everywhere. Oh yeah. I do wish I could to do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's right, that's uh -huh. right. Is that open again? Is that now? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's Spanish Village, you guys, for interesting art. Yeah. And also really cool little, like, buildings and structures and cool tile mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. really Some history. Mm -hmm. We went there recently. It was They were not open, but we just sat and had lunch on one of the picnic yeah. tables in the middle. It was really fun. Oh, so good, right? Yeah. Okay, and then just bring the stem down. You can add a line in the middle or just on the outside mm -hmm. and then just kind of fill it in with a little bit of that orange you have on your plate. Mm -hmm. To me that seems like the hardest part because that's a long straight line. Mm -hmm. Like right? That would be the hardest is not to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Then I would just say I've got a wine glass. The 80s they had those funky wine glasses that had the funky <laughs> stems and that's what I'll, I would yeah, make. Yeah. That'd be easier for me. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I love the look of the grapes and I love the swirls. But this one has a different it's personality than this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Reminds me of like doing a tree trunk. Uh, one of the first things that, that I, when I was watching YouTube videos about painting with tree trunks, they're like, always make sure the bottom is thicker than the, the top. top. <laughs> but I never thought about too. that. Did you have a fat top? It tree? Looks, nothing looks more weird than a tree where the, the top is thicker <laughs> than the, the, the bottom. bottom. <laughs> Rob, why didn't you paint tonight? I, you know, I don't know why. I, I was going to make him paint, but I'm like, oh painting. god, I got to talk to him, and I got to do this, and have him paint, and I can't do it both. Yeah. Next time I'll paint. <laughs> yeah. A little auction off your painting. <laughs> That's it, Rob's paintings. <laughs> Next time for sale. That's a good idea. Yeah, everybody's still I'll get, on my, I'll get all my family to bid on it. That was good, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good, good scene. Me too. While she's finishing, you guys, I don't know, on oh. YouTube you can see it, but did everybody see? This is our Piazza del Formaggio. To just say, this is Del Mar. So if, if you're ever up in Del Mar and you're just hankering for a bit of cheese and wine, stop at our Piazza Del Formaggio, which is the piazza, the place for cheese. Uh, so you can sit out here and, and do this. You can bring your painting. You can sit here and paint if you wanted. We wouldn't mind. And um, it's just oh, a really huh? super place. So it's now open for um, partying on the patio. Yeah. In the piazza. Set up, And you can set up a party with us. Yes, exactly. 
happy to do it. You're e you're gonna share the chocolate yeah, with me. Yeah, <laughs> I already had my piece of chocolate. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you more though. But what about this? There's more manchego. What's oh, happening okay. here? Yes, this is manchego. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, but what was different. the chocolate? Uh huh. This yeah, was. Right. Oh no. Uh, Do we all get the same different. chocolate? Ours uh, is salty. No, no. we all got Chihuahua chocolates. <laughs> so they're all. Everyone has different flavors from Chihuahua. We had the salted chocolate crunch. And then we have one more piece of manchego too. Which is good with chocolate. Mm. Chocolate, chocolate so wine, we know nutty. chocolate wine's good. Chocolate and blue cheese. Also good. We didn't do blue tonight. Chocolate, did you good. say chocolate wine? I said chocolate with wine. Oh. <laughs> 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 I have seen chocolate wine. Chocolate wine would be yes, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should be really rich. So now we you're lightening it up with just white? Well, I was just kind of fixing I had Okay. So you went over the black with white. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you need to fix something, everybody, a little white over the black will yes. do the trick because I just saw her do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so nice to sit here and not have to do it and then say, oh, look at this. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, you missed a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's always oh, a critique yeah. when you're sitting here. I'm coaching. Yeah. coaching. No, I have a problem with my tongue. Coaching. How do I fix the cup? Uh, the wine glass? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good Maybe blue on top? Darker at the top? So, I would say it's just a Okay, she's got, she's helping someone to paint over a little bit that's okay. too black, and she's giving it a little more blue and a little more white on top to even out the heavy black. So if that happened to you out there, that's what you can do. Do we have any more YouTube um, questions or No questions, everybody's just drinking and eating, all good. So everybody's good, this was my, um, this oh, was my dinner so tonight. That was dinner? You're not getting anything else? Oh, we'll yeah. <laughs> In and out, so you know, you know it's, it's on the You know the exit on the way home, right? Yeah. <laughs> I might stay up a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think what other cheeses I would do with this orange. A brie. I would do a brie style, but I would also do a blue. I would love to do a blue with this. I gotta say. With the wine? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Just a little funk with funk. What about like, um, you know, sometimes they'll pair, they always say like apples with cheddar or apples with camembert. Oh, or alpine. Yeah, any of those. <sighs> Rob, the problem is I would eat any of them with any of them, so there's just no perfect answer. You can go, I was doing a tasting and somebody's like, well, should I have it with this or that? And I'm like, well, Which one do you want? Yeah, <laughs> both. I mean, you can do different types of pairings. Like, you can do the same wine, try it with four different, very yeah. different cheeses and see how each one affects it differently. Yeah. That's the, kind of the fun of it. Tonight, I'm going to tell you, the Robiola, to me, with this, was the favorite. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anybody else out there has a different favorite tonight, but with this wine, those two together were just like mm, harmonious and like a little Beatles song. They just, the harmonies went well together. I think um, my favorite, maybe because uh -huh. it was new, was, okay. good, was Good Mood. What well, was Good Mood? Okay. And I was just snacking. You, and you're snacking because you, yeah. you love pizza. I was, yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe I was just craving pizza or something, but that was new for me. So the Garrocha, Manchego, or those are standards you know i lo always love those and i know gotcha. them so well um the the robiola was like a taleggio it reminded me mm -hmm. of a taleggio kind of like a mini taleggio a little salty yeah really delicious i like the texture um but the good mood was my that was your goat that was your one winner today. for tonight the winner was good mood okay i'm going with your robiola but everybody it's all good this is the thing Okay. But both of them had the funk. What did you call it? No, the growth on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> so we like the ones with growth. Yeah. It's not gross growth. It's growth. Growth. Yeah. I mean that good growth. growth. Good growth. The rind is always with growth. Okay, so Brie, you now because you you had the solid black, and now you're doing the white just to give it a little texture, or yeah. Or so I took a little bit of white and just made some lines. Now I'm going back on top with black to thin them out a bit so they're not as thick. Mm -hmm. Kind of gives like a shadowy, I don't know how to describe, like depth. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is that basically supposed to be light then? The, this part? The white. Like the lighter part, is it light hitting it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and I think sh you had mentioned that the top of this rind was not quite black. It was exactly. Lighter, oh, the so model. We, yeah. A little lighter. Yeah. We had uh, modeled it off of uh, Tom de Savoie. 
ah, that okay. has the black. But that, I mean, Garrocha has that dark rind uh -huh. too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just to give it that um, that kind of texture. So this interesting. Um, this one, Rie, you made the your stem almost all black. Are you going back? This one yeah, was more of the gold. Yeah, I'm gonna go back uh -huh. and add a little more color. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so get your base down and then highlight it afterwards. Kind yeah, of? yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. I find it a little easier to get the details dialed in after you have the basic shape. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basic shapes first, then details. Yeah. Yeah. Rian, do I do the triangle and black on top of the cheese? Like that for that yellow or the one? Uh, you can do oh, either one. Now I'm like, so just do like a triangle up. Yeah, I would do it. From Is it good work? Oh, yeah. We're going to parade the paintings across the screen oh, after good. this. Yep. Is Lorenzo a painting or Sarah? Oh, okay. <laughs> and Sarah's painting left-handed. And left-handed? What? Wow. Super model. I'm done. Yeah. Yes. Now what am I painting for small cheese? So now, she, now you're just color highlighting, color. right? At this point, is everybody to the highlight stage and just kind of yeah, touch solid up black, stage? Black, black, yeah. Yeah. Highlights. Uh -huh. Solid black for the cheese. Yeah. And then you can just add a little bit of white to add some highlight to it. Okay. Yeah, every, all the painters are busy painting, obviously. Uh, but it's fun to see it come together. The eaters and drinkers <laughs> are just <laughs> doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That looks better. <laughs> they have a genius yeah. Huh? So you went a little darker on the edge there, yeah? Yeah, I'm trying to blend it back into the Okay. Art fascinating and, and um, not just like the old school artists, the dollies we talked about, whatever. But what about the graffiti artists that are really have their own styles, right? Mm -hmm. It's super cool, like to see. I love to see what some of them do. It's amazing. Yeah, I like uh, even like the um, like Banksy stuff. I, think yeah, really I mean, he's like crazy, amazing, amazing right? Do you, can you get into the abstract stuff like the Jackson Pollock, Ooh, like the that expressionism? Some of it I, I yeah, okay. some of it I like. Rothko, you can get into like a, like this right here, this is a Rothko. <laughs> <laughs> right here? Could you get this into it? wall is Rothko. Uh, um, maybe more of Picasso. Would you know the different, like, angly. would you be able to know like a Jackson yeah. Pollock from a fake? No. I wouldn't <laughs> No. No. Could I tell a Gina from a, yes. <laughs> it would not be good. I like, yeah. uh. A lot of the what is doll surreal the surreal stuff like like um, what's her name from Mexico the um, oh, Frida Kahlo Frida Kahlo. Kahlo. yes Frida Kahlo yes that's right Frida Kahlo stuff uh -huh. and, um, like uh, Renee Magritte Magritte, Magritte? okay that stuff is, kind of interesting. is interesting to me um, in our building lives. Um, Tim Cantor. Has anybody seen Tim Cantor? You've work? shown me his stuff. Oh, it's, it's like awesome. It's um. Reminds me of Tim Burton. He yeah. should hang out with Tim Burton mm -hmm. because it's random, like kind of creepy mm -hmm. looking things, almost alien, almost surreal and fantasy. Mm -hmm. But the detail hey, work is so crazy, good. right? Oh, we then like the bottom of it. You have somebody with, you know, bold, big colors, right? And then you have angles. Or what about a Monet that's all fluffy? So that's like I mean, the what about uh, that? Impre you know, like impressionist. The impressionist like yeah. Uh, it's okay. I feel like once you've seen one, you've kind of seen them all. <laughs> My dad I'm at the Louvre, so. and I'm like, oh, skip the Impressionist wing. I've seen one. I've seen them all. I mean, no, it's, <laughs> they're, they're, it's fine, but... <laughs> I mean, it's like but everyone has their favorites. Yeah, it's just yeah. their... It was, uh, I don't know, it's it's not as dynamic to me. Okay. Yeah. Yep, so but not your favorite style. like Monet, mm -hmm. Manet. Uh, Manet. Yeah, Renoir, Degas. Oh, good Gaulle. one. Oh, here it goes, Gauguin. Ah. Well, Gauguin yeah, does all is. the, uh, like, the, 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 the um, Caribbean people, like, because the, they moved. Ah, very nice. So he does a lot of Who's the one that lived in the Caribbean who lived out Philippines or the South Pacific? Mm. I just watched the show on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe that 
Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. All right, Bree, what are you doing now? I see. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch up the grapes a bit. I just add a little stem. So you just find a spot and make a. I would pick your spot for your grape stems, ladies and gents. There you go. All right. Pick your, uh, oh, okay, well, pick mine because I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that looks right good here. though. Yeah, so that's good. Either right yeah. Yeah. The top of the yeah, sheet. Like on the white axis. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But what about this one? On the very top? No, he's on the yeah. cheese too? Uh, no stem on the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then you can also just kind of shade the bottom with a little stroke of the black paint. Um, Almost like shadowy. Yeah, a little yeah. shadow. And then also you can outline the cheese with the black too. That's good. Oh, oh yeah, so yeah. on this one, everybody, if you can tell, on uh, this one's outlined the cheese, that one's not. And they're both beautiful. They're just different, mm -hmm. depending if you want it outlined or not. But I do like the shadowy look here, but I love your swirls there. That's so interesting. Yeah, just different. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. outline the grapes or no? Yeah, so just like, not on all of them. I just kind of do a half circle on some of them just to bring in a little shadow on the side. There's a really good uh, documentary. I was kind of joking about that, the Rothko thing, but like, okay. there's a really good documentary called The Power of Art. And it's mm -hmm. this guy, Simon Shama. He's a historian. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I love hearing him talk about art because he, he's so passionate and he's a, he's like the, the best I've ever seen at being able to articulate why Jackson Pollock is great or why Rothko is great. Okay. And I highly recommend. Yeah, he explains, but he explains why it's brilliant. Like yeah. it takes like some, some build up. Okay. And so you have to kind of understand the history a little bit to understand why they were so different. Kind of like understanding why certain like musicians when they came out were, it was groundbreaking. Like it seems, yeah, impactful. Like when you hear Chuck Berry or El or whoever, whoever yeah. now it seems, I don't know, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't But they were the first, or they, they just yeah. showed something different. At the time, yeah. it was just like, oh, no one had seen it before, or heard it before. Mm -hmm. okay. What's that called? It's called The Power of Art, but the, the guy's name is Simon Shama, and he is a historian. He has a lot of great um, documentaries and books, like some on uh, British history, Jewish history, and so he's one of my favorite historians. I pretty much, like, Devour all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you devour everything that I've seen. <laughs> I know you had a sandwich today that you devoured. You have the oh, cheese plate that you devoured. I just inhale. <laughs> <laughs> it's there's more cheese in the shop. There's oh, like the shop has cheese. Okay, I'll, I'll be right there. There's in. cheese in there. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. All right, we're getting close, everybody. And the painters free are painting away. Everything seems fine now. Out in paint land, so. Oh, now you're doing white on top of it? On so, top of black. yeah, so just in the details, you can always just kind of go back on top to add a little more color, fix anything. Like, I, that piece felt too thick, so I wanted to thin it out a bit. Just with white? Yeah, white, okay. and then a little bit of the green back on top just to, you know, blend it together. You can do that on any of them. Um, that gives it so much more depth, yeah. Yeah. the combination. So like when, you know how they say like Da Vinci used to like do like one little stroke a day sometimes, sometimes you just come and stare at a work and not even do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so if you wanted to, like tomorrow you could come back to this and oh, be like, yeah. oh, I can see 10 more yeah. little things I want to do to this. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to make Which this. is great that we have these big paints that you can come back tomorrow yeah. and add another layer if it's mm -hmm. not thick enough. Right. Touch up anything you want to touch up. Painting they did like two years ago, and I'm adding apples on the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I like apples. I'm gonna have more apples. Yeah. And see them when they get when they. Well, I look at the painting. I'm like, you know what? That looks too cold. Yeah. I need some like spring yeah. 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 It's funny. Oh, well, Oftentimes, I'll do a painting and I'll think, oh, it's okay. okay. But I'll come back a week or two later and completely change it, and it looks yeah, yeah. different. Yeah. Like different. Yeah. yeah. Change it all. Teaches you a lot about yourself. No, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And what mood you might have been in. What if you painted it in a bad mood uh -huh. versus a good mood? Yeah. Oh. Different paintings. It's like right? cooking. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like cooking. Yeah. Angry Black painting. On the top of Ang the yes. An angry painting. Angry cooking. It doesn't work. Yeah. Then it's not as good. Oh, right? yeah. So right. 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 You're happy. Yeah. yeah. So now, Brie, you're just going the final touches on the cheese itself, I see. Yes. 
And you added white to the top, Maria? Top of the grapes, I think. Top of the cheese. A little, yeah, a little bit of white on the black. And then you can go back on top of it with more black, kind of blend it in. Yeah, sounds like you like Yeah, sounds exactly. What are you doing? You got too much table. <laughs> 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 I have a big table. That's okay. Yeah, okay. yeah slightly yeah. different yeah. angles. That yeah. looks different because of her angle. Uh, Ooh, I like your colors too. Yeah, hers is more orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yours were steeping longer in the seeds, apparently. <laughs> We'll have to see what Sarah, we'll, we'll, we're going to parade all of them across just to see the differences when yeah. we're done here. Great. When we are oh, done here. Sarah. I can't tell, it's all crooked. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's it's no, like it's a, not. You got a gyco. Oh, yeah, look at that. She's a gyco. She's lots of wine. And you didn't, yeah, right, what does it's that say? Awesome. What does that subliminally <laughs> mean now? Yeah. She's like, literally. I got two grapes because I just can't bother with the grapes, but the wine, no, I'm kidding. It looks great. Like that, it doesn't look that big. <laughs> <laughs> it, looks, it looks perfect. It looks, it looks, perfect. Perfect. It looks like the perfect size. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. And I like that she went red wine. So and I don't know and a thing about Annie and Megan here. We'll see what happens here. Oh, yeah. Then we turn around. Yeah. yeah. And, but we'll parade that still. But I want to see it, though. Can I see I'll a different? The glass. Okay. No, no, okay. No, no, okay. No, no, okay. No, no, okay. Oh yeah, look at that. So oh, she's nice. got more. Set. She oh, did the like whole bottle. Let me see. Yeah. yeah. The, the color on the. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the color oh, exactly. Is like a, yeah, yeah. Oh my they're gosh, nice. everybody. They're I like it. They're all good. Well. I like it. It's all good. So now Bree's doing more like kind of shadowy, right? <laughs> and highlights on just the cheese paste itself, and it has popped more. Yeah. Because you did that. Yeah. Just a couple finishing touches. You guys, like, finish, but now it's, I think, just tweaking, right? Yeah. 
everybody's just kind of like, mm, I like a mastering, shadow here. Mastering. But I want to see a signature on people's, like a, 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 something that says, this is mine. I did this. You have to do that. Chef right? Soft. What? You got to sign Chef You have to sign it somehow. Oh. Um, like if you put a blob on there, whatever you, whatever's your, your signature mark. Because that's good. A and M. M and A. But wine and cheese and painting all good together. Yeah, okay. Now she's getting darker on that edge. That's nice. Because that makes it like shadowy. Mm -hmm. It makes everything else pop. It makes it pop. Before we finish, you guys, we're going to parade the finished works up here. Rob, do you know what's next? Uh, no, I don't. I will <laughs> tell you what's next. All right, so we did orange wine. That's off of our list. But we're skipping a week and um, record wine. So that's a winery. They have a tasting room in Hillcrest. Yeah, Record Wines. And it's, it's a cute little ta tasting room right on University. We're going to do a tasting with them. Three wines, and they have cute little bottles they're going to give us. They uh, brew them. Brew. They <laughs> make them up in Paso. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, up in Paso, but we're going to do a tasting with them, and that's on the 9th, June 9th. But the next Wino Wednesday is the 23rd, and we've done Syrah, but now we're going to do its little cousin, Petite Syrah. Oh. It's baby cousin. So that's going to be next up at the AOC. Bree, look at this. So everybody, I hope everybody out there, want to. can everybody that's painting show their paintings and come up and, because we want to see the different styles. <laughs> I'll hold the round. Wait, yeah. Rob, you go get you right. get Sarah's. All right, and Andy. No, also Sarah's. Yeah. This is George Thurgood song called "I Drink Alone." That's me. <laughs> I know that song. <laughs> no, one bourbon, one scotch, one beer. That's the one I'm. Yeah. yeah he went to so this is Sarah's. This is chef song. <laughs> so put it right it next to it. I want to see how it compares. Like that's so interesting. Left oh, she's got modely. Oh, I like it. Right. She's got a lot of uh, highlights in her. It's good, Sarah. Oh yeah, I, I like, like the, the brush strokes and like the kind of. Uh huh. That's uh, she's more wispy. I'm gonna call her style wispy. 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 I like wispy. No, but that because it is. It's like I've got little swirls and wisps. All right, Annie. What did you I have to see? Because that's very cool. You gonna take ours? You don't want to be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is. I haven't seen this yet. This is Annie Megan. Very nice. Oh my, so that one's bold. And I look, she's more salmon. She's got a more salmon. No, it's kind of more. It's salmon -y. But I give it a bold. You are you guys are bold. Yeah. That's what I think. Bold. You guys are bold. I think you're bold. Whiskey We're not afraid. And yeah. bold. We're not afraid. <laughs> we're not afraid. <laughs> yeah. We oh, you want to show? Up, so we're not afraid. <laughs> Oh, I'm Shirley. Sherry. Sherry. Okay. Sherry. Sherry. This is Sherry. Sherry. Look oh. at Sherry. This is my mom. Ooh, this is my mom. Oh. Mom's in the house. That's so, so nice. I see where you get it. My yep, exactly. It's so hot. I'll show you. It's a lot. She's like, it's like, 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 look at the little top. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> I need more it's in big old fat steel. It's like the, the colors are a little bolder, too. Like, look at the orange and yeah. the Yeah, again, hat. to me, it's the color that's bold on this one. Yeah. yeah. You're a bold with a color. And this one's Terry's. Terry, okay. Where'd she go? Terry's she went to the bathroom. Oh, she did. But you have to look at Terry. So Terry went off script, which is she both. has an opinion on the wine. Oh, yeah. Terry would be purple. Marcia was still her own drummer. But we learned that Terry has a purple house or something. Yes. Yeah. This is for Terry's purple room. Yes. But Terry would love Dali. She's got oh, yeah. her cheeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. it's but so that's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. Her cheese melted. Her cheese melted. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, it is. It's the closest to the clocks. But that's a style, right? She marches yeah. to her own drummer. I like that. Yeah, I like it. Oh, my God, everybody. Um... We have to thank everybody that watched, everyone that attended. Bree, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Bree. If so you much. want thank to you. visit, it's Bree. Oh my God! Tell me the um, Instagrams and the. Oh, it's Bree Gski and Bree Yes. So go there because you do parties all over. I mean, you can have your own party if you have a group of people. Super fun. Um, we just hooked up because you reached out on Instagram, so yeah. that's great and it's yeah. crazy and how fun that is, right? Um, thank you for supporting us, for eating cheese, for painting, um, for having a good time. Um, on to the next adventures. We also have, oh, we have so many. And it's going to be in person again. And very, very soon, big party for everybody that's been watching over this year here at the Piazza Aww. del Formaggio. We're just going to have a cheese feast. We're just going to come and eat, drink. We're going to talk. We're not going to sit there and 
Well, Rob will sit and talk the whole time. <laughs> but, <laughs> we're just going to eat and drink and have no, a good time. Well. But thank you all. Have a good night. I uh, really appreciate it. And until um, next time. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I'll be the same.